Hello everybody and welcome to a new Prehistoric Kingdom Dev Diary. So there's, this is a big one because there's a lot of information that we've got to get to re regarding Update 8 and a little bit on Update 9. And boy oh boy, Update 8 is looking to be a fucking chonker of an update. Adding all sorts of new features, including one that you can see here. We'll get to that later in the Dev Diary. So let's get started. <laughs> To begin this month's dev diary, we'd like to share that the team is very confident in an October release for Update 8. The core development phase has finished and we have now moved on to testing, finalizing and ensuring all animals have been upgraded successfully. This update was originally slated for July but and has taken much longer uh, has taken a much longer time to finish than initially anticipated. The further we went into Update 8, the more unforeseen but addressable issues appeared requiring immense levels of planning, teamwork, and refactoring to eventually get this release across the finish line. We are focused on getting all the underlying animal systems to feature parity with, that, with what players are used to, in addition to making them highly expandable and much more performant. This new base for the animals will allow us to easily make changes and additions in the future, as opposed to before, where the animals essentially did not change since release. Update 8 has been a massive endeavour, so we'd like to thank you all for waiting patiently while our team worked hard over the last few months. It's been an enormous collaboration between all departments, and now that it's almost ready, will allow us to do so much more with the animals going forward. As one of the final steps for Update 8, we'll be porting all of our species across to the new Animals V2 architecture. Our latest collection of AI locomotion and audio components that have been developed that have been in development for the last few months. Porting the old animals is extremely fast thanks to the new editor tooling that allows us to not only upgrade existing animals but set up brand new species with significant automation. This new pipeline has tons of advantages but perhaps the most important to players is how easy it is for us to customize behavioral differences between species. With a few simple sliders we can now change things like animals fleetedness, um, metabolism or how much food they need to consume before they're full. As new AI behaviors are added in future patches, it'll be very easy to plug them into factors like playfulness, boldness, and sociality. It might come as a bit of a shock to some players, but animals are actually one of the worst performing things in the live game. In some key areas, however, we've managed to improve the animal performance in Update 8 tenfold. One of these key areas is our brand new in-house IK system. So that's inverse kinematics for those who don't know. Um, that has been developed exclusively for the needs of Prehistoric Kingdom. For our more tech-oriented fans, the old inverse kinematic system took 62 milliseconds to process limb adjustment for 400 quadrupedal animals. From an in-development test, however, our solution only took 3 milliseconds for the same amount of critters, offering up to a 20, 20 times improvement in inverse kinematic performance. Another substantial optimization has actually been animal audio processing. In Update 8, we now cull sounds early based on an animal's level of detail. This prevents small detail-oriented sounds from ever triggering if the player is too far away, cutting, cutting down on wasted processing. Before the October release of Update 8, let's take one last look at all the major improvements coming in this patch. The full extensive change log will be available on Steam at the release of Update 8. Boasting an impressive crest and sickle-shaped claws, it's almost time for everyone's favourite speedy thief to join the kingdom. Like all the animals in Update 8, Velociraptor will of course be making use of our, new, our brand new locomotion and AI. To recap, animals will be navigating seamlessly using strafes, walking backwards and turning on the spot as part of their general locomotion, locomotion state. They are very fluid, reactive and can move between walking or running as needed. Some creatures like quadrupeds even have trotting animations to smooth out that dynamic transition. We've also redone our audio breathing system to take to better take advantage of the new fluid locomotion. If influenced by an animal's speed and exertion, the pitch, intensity and frequency of their breath will respond to the current circumstances of an animal. If they've been running for a while, it might take longer for, that, for their breathing to steady. We'd like to take this even further in the future by making an animal's health or sickness audible through how they breathe, cluing players into potential issues. We should note that at release, hay beds will only allow one animal to rest on them at a time, Apparently genetic engineering makes them selfish. This is something we'd definitely like to improve, but in the meantime, we recommend making use of multiple hay beds in a habitat for the best results. 
For the thirsty animals in your park, we're pleased to announce that the long-awaited modules water troughs are finally going to be included in Update 8. Available in large and small sizes, water troughs are a great solution for habitats that are too small or too new <laughs> or too uniquely shaped to comfortably contain lakes. A small yet hopefully appreciated feature we've worked on is physicalized interaction points for feeders, water troughs and lakes. Rather than ensuring animals line up exactly where they need to, to when eating or drinking, they'll instead check for valid head placements. This results in a far more natural behaviour where animals can be seen eating or drinking from random angles, so long as their head reaches the goal. When players create new animals in Update 8, there's a random chance for them to be born as albino, melanistic or leucistic. So we can see that here with these Edmontosaurus and Ectans. We've got a melanistic one in the back and an albino one. Or, or leucistic. They're, they're both very similar, but I, I want to um, bet on albino here. But that is basically what they're going to look like. And we can see the same here with these Brachiosaurus. Um, we see a melanistic one on the left, and what I think is a um, leucistic one on the right. New feature is Park Beauty, a new component of park rating requiring players to build their park in an optimal way that keeps your aesthetic seamless and beautiful. Gardens in particular are a great way to boost park beauty, while foliage, fences, walls and decorations can help to reduce the impact caused by infrastructure or dirty habitats. Guest needs have been retuned along with a number of bug fixes that previously imp impacted how guests interacted with the economy. We've been able to make a few pathfinding updates along with the brand new queuing feature that should hopefully make guest traffic a lot more manageable and hopefully predictable. Players can tune into the guest needs management view to locate high quantities of dissatisfied visitors. So you can see that here with the heat map system. Um, and another little bonus, if your animals or habitats have been neglected, Nigel will occasionally chime in to point out the issues that need to be addressed. There are 76 new contextual lines across a variety of possible triggers. Good item, Nigel. Including 34 foliage items, the tropical biome overhaul features a mix of brand new species and remastered classics, ranging from lush monsteras to towering capox. Yeah, this is looking very nice now. Look at this. It is fantastic how this looks now. Just a rework of the maps is a good step in the right direction. Um, in update 8, the tropical map itself has had a makeover too, as, it, as I was about to say. The playable areas will be made to better incorporate the updated plants with new forests, waterways, waterfalls, and prairies. Existing tropical parks will not be affected by these changes. That's good. Um, we've got another view here of a bit of the tropical map, so you can see some natural swampland, it looks like. Some lakes, some prairie, and some forests as well. Look very nice, and a little waterfall um, in there as well. The scrubland map has also had its playable space revamped. The landscape has become much more forested with natural swamps and layers of rock dotting the horizon. Why did I say it like that? Of la and layers of rock dotting the horizon. Yeah. I'm just going to move on. Okay, existing scrubland parks will not be affected by these changes. Another bonus. You can see those layers of rock on the horizon um, there. So you've got large patches of rock um, dotting your map and all sorts of new plants there too unless those are just the aleppo pines uh, modular glass now displays ambient reflections and renders more accurately during atmospheric conditions actually looks really nice love how that looks um, we've also updated the modern stone brick wall textures to better fit our vision for the modern theme and improve fidelity like before this is a recolorable material that's really modern I've walked around plenty of cities, and I haven't seen bricks like that. Looks more like a temple, if I'm going to be completely honest. But hey, if that's their vision, that is their vision. And honestly, it's a lot more unique than what I was expecting. As you might have been able to tell by some of the screenshots in this dev diary, we've updated the lighting and atmospherics on every map to make them look even better. The game should look a lot more balanced, real, and rich in color. A cinematic an camera trick... Yeah. <laughs> A cinematic camera tracking mode will be available for non-mini exhibit animals, toggleable through the animal info panel at any time. When selecting a newly bred species, the cinematic camera is automatically enabled to coincide with Nigel's voice lines. If too disrupting, players can disable that functionality in the options menu. 
Modular and pass placement actions will automatically remove terrain bound vegetation from underneath them, making it much easier to expand the park. Add, added, added options to either change auto save frequency or disable it entirely, which can be found in the ga gameplay settings. Yeah, auto saves. Finally. Um, but the next few updates will be focusing on content driven releases now that the animal overhaul is almost out of the way. This means we can get back to more regularly scheduled updates that include new animals, maps, and modular items while we work on bigger features in the background. To reflect this, we've divided our Trello into current and planned developments. When we're confident in a feature being ready, e.g. staff, animal behaviours, we'll move it into one of the update columns on the right. Okay, and I've had a little read through of the Trello. It seems like they're planning for a lot more animals, as they've just said. And I think I think it was update 14, they have, they've got six, six species planned for that update. So that is going to be incredible when that comes out. Following the next release, we have Update 9, our grassland update. This patch will be dropping with three new animal species featuring the big-nosed Australian icon, Mutaborosaurus. During this animal are some not-yet-revealed mystery creatures, some of which should hopefully scratch a fan favourite off your wish list. You'll hear more about these remaining species closer to the release of Update 9. Damn it! I was really hoping that we were going to like get a little sneak peek of them, or some name drops. It would have been nice, but hey, can't have everything. One of my favourite uh, screenshots in Prehistoric Kingdom. Just gives me Walking with Beast vibes. In terms of landscaping, this update will, of course, include the grassland biome. A gorgeous selection of grasses dominated by a variety of acacia and marula trees. This is a highly versatile biome and will be retroactively added to animals like Smilodon. To conclude, Update 9 will also include a brand new map that's set deep in the heart of a Tanzanian crater. This flat landscape is perfect for those looking for an easy building experience due to this lack of dense foliage or extensive waterways. Please stay tuned for information regarding Update 9's release after Update 8. And that is all folks. Um, lots of new features coming in Update 8, so hopefully, fingers crossed, the update will be able to release in October and we can check out all its new features. Check out the Velociraptor, the new atmospherics, the new guest needs, the water troughs, all that sort of stuff. And of course, the genetic mutations as well. So if you're excited for the next stages of Prehistoric Kingdom's development, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.